This is Brian Putt. Today I want to talk to you about evaluating qualitative value measures. These are things that are difficult to quantify. And we're going to be looking at some different decision analysis, decision quality tools that can be used to evaluate these measures. Let's talk about value measures and how we how you make decisions. A lot of the decision analysis that I've done has been very quantitative economics. Everything's money oriented. And other things are uh, tend to be pretty soft and can kind of considered externally to the economics. But I understand that uh, the Pew concept is something that's used uh, uh, frequently in, in systems engineering. And as I understand the Pew concept matrix, you basically have different development plans. Let's call these concept one to concept four. And then you have different criteria that are important to you. And you, you give these guys a score. And then you have a weight that gets assi assigned to, to each one of these. And then you can calculate an overall score for the, each of the projects. Uh, this is kind of a rank and weight. It's related to the analytical hierarchy process. Um, I have real concerns about that, and because the the rankings that you give between these things, uh, you know, whether it be one or two, let's say let's let's call it a ranking. The problem is that if I give let's say a score of one to five, the difference between a, a two and a three may be not the same as the difference between a four and a five, but analytically they're they're identical. It's just one up by the same weight, right? Incrementally. So that's a problem. The other problem is it's not probabilistic. Well, you can get around the probabilistic side of it by using something called a multiple objective decision hierarchy process. Uh, this was kind of developed or has been promoted by Ralph Keeney. He's one of the uh, uh, old time decision analysts. And, and the way that process works is there's a utility function assigned to each of the key criteria. So here the criteria would be the city site. This is trying to um, evaluate buildings as an example. So there's a city size, the city wealth, and they can take on different shapes. So it's not always just upward trending. It could be that here you want to be in the either either end of it, not in the middle. Let's not. These are not really necessarily related to these categories. It's just a conceptual idea. But you then have weights associated with them that, and generally would total 100%. But I really don't like this process either. <laughs> I really don't like the, the ranking and weighting, even if it's probabilistic. The following example of evaluating non-quantitative value measures comes from an example from Even Swaps by Ralph Keeney and Howard Rafa. My preference is to do something with Even Swaps. And the even swaps is very different in that it becomes more of a dialogue process and elimination by equalizing things. Let me go, th go through an example. In this particular example, we're trying to look at an office location. And there are five locations. And we've gone through, and here are the, here are the categories. We've gone through and given them measures. You'll notice that you know, some, their numbers, their different units. This is A through C. So it's a hodgepodge of, of value measures here. So now what we want to do to better understand this, we're going to color code them. The things that are bad will make red. And the things that are good will make blue. And then there's a spectrum of colors in between. So eventually we've covered everything where the hottest colors, the red and orange are bad and the blue and the green are the best. All right, so now how do we use utilize this? So when we look at the colors, we can see that Lombard here is cooler than Pierpoint. So let's just comparing these two. So you see Lombard's better on commute, better on customer access, better on office services, and the monthly cost is better. But they're also the same office size. So clearly Lombard is better than Pierpoint. So if that's the case, I can eliminate that alternative. Okay. So now let's look at uh, Montana and compare that to Parkway. 
And so we can see that the Montana has a smaller, a shorter commute. It has better customer access. The office size is better. And the office services are about the same. Okay. The problem is that this cost $50 more a month for Montana. So we have a dialogue and we might say, okay, hey, for <clears throat> a 20 minute shorter commute, 25 versus 45, I'd easily pay $50 a month more for the Montana property and therefore I can delete the parkway. Okay, advancing a little bit, we've been able to eliminate office services here. We're now down to three alternatives, Lombard, Baranove, and Montana. So now what we'd like to do here is to equalize on the office space. So if I, in this case, if I had a 700 foot square foot office, I might have some conferences where I'd have to go get a, a conference room. And let's assume that I could do that for $300 a month more. So I had $300 to, to the 1800. And for the even smaller Barnove facility, I would have to add even more money and have to have $900. So now I've added those costs and now I can eliminate the office services. And now I can also eliminate Lombard because <clears throat> this is better and the cost is less. So now I'm down to two alternatives and I just have to make a decision here depending upon whether this customer access, however you may value it, is worth $100 a month more for the Montana. So, but the point is, it's a dialogue. It's not a ranking and weighting process. And I think in doing that, that method, you actually can get a, a more input, particularly with your interdisciplinary uh, study teams, okay? So this kind of brings us back to our decision analysis, kind of concluding here. We had these six steps from framing the problem, uh, identifying the value measures and the trade-offs, um, and eventually coming down to commitment to action. So um, I see that a lot of similarities with the systems engineering. It's integrated, it's looking at the big problem. Uh, I think this kind of expands. I would say that uh, systems engineering is part of decision analysis, but decision analysis is actually bigger than the systems engineering. Um, you might also, I guess there's other aspects from a you know, physical engineering side of it that uh, systems engineering can be more detailed. So maybe it's a Venn diagram, if you will. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, you can uh, go to my YouTube presentations or you can contact probabilitymanagement.org. Thank you.